the sowing of poisonous concepts such as nationalism saw these ideas slowly take root through Western agents disguised as missionaries involved in the field of science and humanitarian aid. These missionaries consisted of British, French and American agents who aimed at distancing the Muslims away from the correct understanding of Islam by inserting doubt and conjecture into their minds. Chief among these plans was the arousal of nationalistic feeling so that the people began to identify as Persians, Arabs and Turks instead of Muslims. The first missionary center was thus established in Malta towards the end of the 16th century. Such centers, however, had a minimal effect until the 18th and 19th centuries when the Islamic decline began to perpetuate. The American mission penetrated the entire region of Asham by 1834. The British and American Protestant missionaries established their centers in Syria in the year 1839. The Syrian Protestant College, now the American University of Beirut, was established in the year 1866. Other societies included the initially clandestine Al Jamia Al Limia Al Surya, or the Syrian Scientific Society, which was formed in 1857, and the Ottoman decentralization parties such as Al Qahtahiya, Al Fatat, and Al Ahad. These organizations and others were able to carry the Arab nationalist torch whose sparks were spread among the Arab masses, where the Christian missionaries further inflamed religious divisions, which resulted in serious disturbances between the Christians and the Druze, eventually engulfing and involving the Muslims of the Islamic State. The impact of this missionary invasion was devastating, as it succeeded in sowing the seeds of division and declined thought. Western laws and syllabi were introduced into the Islamic State's criminal code and education system, respectively, further distancing the Muslims from the Islamic aqidah and the application of its fruits in daily affairs. The objectives of the missionaries is well summed up by Samuel Zwemer, a leading missionary speaking at a conference in Jerusalem in 1935, where he reminded the Christian missionaries of their objectives. The objective is not to convert Muslims into Christians. This would be an honor for them. Rather, the objective is to stray Muslims away from Islam so that they become individuals with no relationship to Allah. By this, you will be paving the road in the new imperialistic era in the Muslim world. You will be preparing the Muslim mentality to accept to go in the path which you are preparing for them. Turkish nationalism, on the other hand, was also aroused by the Western nations. The establishment of the Young Turks in Paris was to prove another devastating blow to the Islamic State and added to the divisive nationalist sentiments present. In 1908, the Young Turks, or the Committee of Union and Progress, were able to seize power, gaining the explicit approval of the West, for they were made up of like-minded nationalist and secular reformists. Later, when the British and French also supported Arab nationalist sentiments, some from among the Young Turks, such as Jamal Pasha, urged the Arabs to maintain unity among the citizens of the state in a gathering of Arab leaders in Damascus. However, his speech was full of patriotism and can be said to have consolidated patriotism and further distanced the idea of unification upon the Islamic Aqidah alone. The opportunities were beginning to present themselves for the European nations to start physically occupying and attacking a weakening giant. Russia and France 
began to attack and occupy parts of the Uthmani Caliphate in the second half of the 1700s. Russia, under the reign of Catherine, took parts of the Khilafah's land, and Napoleon of France briefly occupied Egypt in the year 1798. The French seized Algeria in 1830 and went on until they captured Tunisia in the year 1881. They then occupied Morocco in 1912. Italy received most of Libya in 1911, and East Africa was thus almost completely severed from the Caliphate's dominion. Likewise, Britain occupied Aden in 1839 and extended its control to Lahaj and the nine protectorates from the borders of southern Yemen to the eastern border of the island. The English had already occupied India long before that date and by colonizing it they took Islamic sovereignty away from what was formerly an Islamically ruled land. Then, in 1882, Britain captured Egypt and in 1889 it spread its expansive influence over Sudan. The campaign against the Islamic world became intense everywhere until the Ummah was exposed to a final decisive blow. The Caliphate and its rulers were willing to accept any condition in order to halt this Western advance at some point, or at least decrease the weight of its nightmare. As compromises started taking place, Resistance movements rose against the West from the Muslim world. A revolution broke out in Algeria. The Muslims in China revolted. The Mahdi's in Sudan likewise. And the Senussi revolution also occurred, not to mention the growing call for the Caliphate's strengthening from Al-Hind. All of these upheavals are a proof pointing to the vitality inherent in the Islamic world, despite its weakness and decline. Nevertheless, these rebellious attempts failed, and the Western colonialists began to write the epitaph of the Ottoman Caliphate. With the outbreak of World War I, the Islamic State made the fatal mistake of entering the war. Germany had convinced the Sultan to enter the war as an opportunity to reverse the Western occupation of parts of the Islamic State. Knowing the British, French and Russian aspirations to eventually abolish the Caliphate, the Uthmani state entered into what was to prove a disastrous alliance with Germany into the Great War. Of the defining moments of the war, which triggered a series of political events towards the abolishment of the Caliphate, was the rise of Mustafa Kemal. Being a little-known junior officer when the war broke out, Mustafa Kemal became known and celebrated after the Battle of Gallipoli. The British had sent the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps to land a fatal blow in the attempts to capture Istanbul. The battle went on for several months, with neither gaining an upper hand, when suddenly, in December 1915, the Allies withdrew in total secrecy. Simultaneously, the Allies were able to gain the support of the Arabs, and through the treachery of the likes of King Faisal and Sharif Hussein, were able to build an enemy within the Ottoman state. The British supported the Arab calls for independence, as well as promising them autonomy over what they deemed as their own lands. This severely weakened the Ottoman Caliphate, for although they may have been able to repel the external armies, the internal Arab rebellion was impossible to counter. Mustafa Kemal, with his newfound fame after the Battle of Gallipoli, began to suspiciously promote and work for the idea that the Ottoman Caliphate should withdraw from the war despite the victory at Gallipoli. He began to make public his holding of Britain in great esteem over the ally Germany and with various political maneuvers was able to gain power leading to the eventual official abolishment of the Caliphate.
بسم الله 